श्री स्वामीनारायण भगवान नी जय अक्षर पुरुषोत्तम महाराज नी जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज नी जय महान स्वामी महाराज नी जय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज शताब्दी महोत्सव नी जय एज वी कंटिन्यू ट्रेवलिंग विद प्रमुख साई महाराज इन हिज बायोग्राफी वी आर लुकिंग एट द ईयर नाइनटीन सिक्सटी फाइव एंड द प्रेपरेशन फॉर शास्त्री जी महाराज शताब्दी सेलिब्रेशन और ऑल ऑन द वे प्रमुख साई महाराज इज करंटली नटलाद्रा एंड द लास्ट प्रसंग वी हर्ड वॉज हाउ स्वामी वॉज वन द ट्रक फुल ऑफ ब्लैंकेट्स केम दैट नाइट वन नाइट एंड स्वामी देन हैड टू स्वामी एंड सत्य प्रिय स्वामी ऑफ लोडेड द ट्रक फुल ऑफ ब्लैंकेट्स सो दस द प्रसंग दैट वी लुक डेट लास्ट नाउ वी आर मूविंग ऑन टू जी ट्वेंटी थ्री सो फॉर मेनी मंथ्स एवरीवन हैड वर्कड very very hard for this utsav the wait was now over there was a lot of excitement in the air at that time in fact yogi ji maharaj was very very excited very very pleased with all the preparations that had gone into the samayo and yogi baba would often say ke aa samayo bahu moto thase je koi nahi aave tene bahu khot aavshe aa to mah aa mahotsav ma je seva lakhavshe તેને ખૂટશે નહીં કેટલો બધો મહિમા યોગી બાપા કે છે સો જન્મે આવી સેવા મળે નહીં સો યોગી બાપા વોઝ ઓલ્સો સો એક્સાઇટેડ અબાઉટ ધ સેલિબ્રેશન્સ ઓફ શાસ્ત્રીજી મહારાજ એન્ડ મે બી ટેકિંગ અ લીફ ફ્રોમ યોગીજી મહારાજીઝ લાઈફ એન્ડ ઇન્સ્પિરેશન ફ્રોમ હિઝ વર્ડ્સ વી આર ઇન અ વેરી સિમિલર સિનારીઓ ફોર અસ ઇઝ વેલ વી આર ઓન ધ વર્જ ઓફ સેલિબ્રેટિંગ પ્રમુખ સાહી મહારાજી શતાબ્દી સેલિબ્રેશન્સ એન્ડ મે બી ધ સેમ વર્ડ્સ અપ્લાય ટુ અસ ઇઝ વેલ આ સમયો બહુ મોટો થશે જે કોઈ નહીં આવે તેને બહુ ખોટ આવશે આ મહોત્સવમાં જે સેવા લખાવશે તેને ખૂટશે નહીં સો જન્મે આવી સેવા મળે નહીં ધીઝ ઓ યોગીજી મહારાજ ઇઝ વર્ડ્સ એન્ડ એઝ અ રિઝલ્ટ થાઉઝન્સ ઓફ ડિવોટીઝ હેડ રસ્ટ ટુ અટલાદ્રા ફોર ધ સેલિબ્રેશન્સ ધ સેન્ટિનિયલ સેલિબ્રેશન્સ બિગેન વિથ ધ વેરી ફર્સ્ટ સભા વિચ વોઝ ઓર્ગનાઇઝ ઇન ધ પ્રેઝન્સ ઓફ યોગીજી મહારાજ એન્ડ પ્રમુખ સાહી મહારાજ and amongst the dignitaries was the then uh, union home minister gulzali lal nanda so he was there uh, in the first sabha swami shri and uh, nanda ji then they came to the entry gate of the akshar vatika to inaugurate the unique exhibition this exhibition was a very unique exhibition it was the first time we done an exhibition of this scale and it had depicted the life and the work of shastri ji maharaj pramukh sai maharaj very enthusiastically gave a tour a very detailed tour of the exhibition to nanda ji let's move on to g24 now now during this occasion occasion we know that uh, we have we read in previous sessions that a special commemorative publication yagna purush smruti granth was also going to be inaugurated on this occasion and on this day because this scripture this publication it depicted different aspects of shastri ji maharaj's life his persona and through different articles paintings photographs and things like that so it was something that again one of the very uh, a unique publication back then and pramukh sai maharaj was also very excited very involved in this and on behalf of the publication committee pramukh sai maharaj said shastri ji maharaj e aa prithvi upar aavi adbhut karya karyu che temni smruti rahe te mate adbhut granth ishwar charan swami tatha bija santo e madi ne taiyar karyo che આ ગ્રંથનું ઉદ્ઘાટન સ્વામીના હાથે થશે હું તો અલ્પ છું તે મોટા છે આ પ્રસંગે શાસ્ત્રીજી મહારાજ દિવ્ય રીતે હાજર છે તેઓની શતાબ્દી ઉજવવાની મળી છે તે આપણું અહોભાગ્ય છે પ્રમુખ સાહી મહારાજ ઇઝ ગિવિંગ ઓલ ધ ક્રેડિટ ઓવર હિયર ટુ પૂજે ઈશ્વર ચરણ સ્વામી બીકોઝ હી વોઝ લીડિંગ ધ પબ્લિકેશન ઓવર હિયર બટ એટ ધ સેમ ટાઈમ સ્વામી સઝ કે યોગીજી મહારાજ વિલ ઇનોગરેટ the publication and then he said hu to alp chu i am very insignificant te mota che pramukh sai maharaj was the main organizer for the festival but he was very very humbling to everyone to hear him say ki i am insignificant hu to alp chu but again this is exactly who swami shi was a very very humble leader let's move on to c25 now during the celebrations on one evening the evening of the 5th of 5th of february which is this the day that we were referring to in the previous session 
Pramukh Sai Maharaj made sure that everything was ready for the next day, for the finale, for the final celebrations, and eventually Swami Sri went to sleep around 2 a.m. Swami had just fallen asleep, and there was a heavy knock on the door. Dharma Jeevan Swami, who was the Sevak Sant at that time with Pramukh Sai Maharaj, he suddenly woke up and he rushed out to see who was there at the door. A Hari Bhakt from Piplag, a village nearby, was at the door knocking away loudly and full of complaints. What had happened was he had actually come in and he couldn't find a bedding or a mattress to go to sleep and so he was fuming with anger. Dharma Jeevan Swami tried to calm him down because he was pretty late at night, everybody was asleep. Pramukh Sai Maharaj heard the commotion. He woke up and he walked towards the Hari Bhakt. In his hand was he was holding a mattress, a blanket and a pillow. And he gave everything to the Sevak Sant and he said, look, just show him a nice spot. He showed him the spot. He said, and yes, who are they, Joe? And he asked the Sevak to lay out the bedding for this Hari Bhakta. Swami Sri had actually given up his own bedding for that Hari Bhakta, which is again an incredible sacrifice we see. Again, a leader of the Utsav festival, but ek Hari Bhakta mate, potani blanket, potanu mattress, Swami Sri arpan kari didu. And then he spent the rest of the night, whatever was left of it, a very short night, on a thin blanket that the Sevak had found for him and he covered himself with his own Gataryu. So again, a true example of Swami Sri's leadership, his sacrifice. Swami was a, a leader, but at the same time he was a Sevak leader. Let's move on to C26. So the main Sava was held on the next day, on the morning of the 6th of February, 1965. The festival was uh, of almost 100,000 Hari Bhaktas had um, come in from all over and gathered to this to celebrate the Yusuf So, Pramukh Sai Maharaj, when it was his turn to speak, again he spoke very passionately about his Guru Shastriji Maharaj. He spoke about Shastriji Maharaj's compassion, his service to humanity, Shastriji Maharaj's sp uh, spiritual purity. Uh, he talked about how he made all the Akshar Purushottam mandirs, but not just that, he was also an orchestrator, an architect of the Chaitanya mandirs. Again, he was referring to all the Hari Bhaktas, the life transformations that Shastriji Maharaj had made. So he spoke about all this. And then he ended the Sabha by offering his apologies and asking for forgiveness in case, you know, if any shortcomings, if any Hari Bhaktas had uh, any difficulties during the Utsav. And then finally, he offered reverence to Yogiji Maharaj by offering a beautifully decorated garland around Yogiji Maharaj. And Yogi Mapa then in return placed the same garland on Pramukh Sai Maharaj. <coughs> Let's move on to C27. Now, after the celebrations were over, Yogiji Maharaj carried on with his vicharan. Pramukh Sai Maharaj stayed back to help conduct and orchestrate the wind-up of the whole festival. Now, this is the difficult part. Once the Utsav is over, everybody leaves. But to then wind up, that is a very difficult task. But Pramukh Sai Maharaj stayed there because it included a lot of other things as well. The closing of the accounts and the finances. Uh, not only that, also returning all the materials. Now, Obviously, during the festival, we had borrowed a lot of uh, things from different places. So, Pramukh Sai Maharaj was very particular about this. It was always in his nature to make sure that everything was returned in the best condition, the most satisfactory condition to the rightful owners as well. So, nothing gets misplaced. Pramukh Sai Maharaj would often say, So, this was a, a message that Pramukh Sai Maharaj lived accordingly throughout his life. And these Shatabdi celebrations were uh, an incredible expression of Pramukh Sai Maharaj's Guru Bhakti. And he gave his Guru a very fitting tribute accordingly. On the 3rd of March, Pramukh Sai Maharaj finally marched on to Bochasan and it was business as usual, meaning Pratishtas, festivals, Padramnis, Parayans, all this started to carry on. The Sadhus in Mumbai had prepared a report for the Centenary Festival, how the festival had unfolded and how it ended. And Pramukh Sai Maharaj received this report two days after the festivities were over. But while he was in Bochasan, he made sure that not only did he read it, but he also replied and sent it back to Mumbai. Again, very typical of Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Any task he took was very prompt. And later that week, he performed the Vastu Pujan for a new cow shed at the Mandir in Bochasan. Now imagine here he's celebrating big festivals, organizing festivals like this, Mandir Pratishtas. But at the same time, there was a cow shed in the Mandir that was going to be built. And here he is doing the Vastu Pujan for a cow shed. 
but she eventually Pramukh Sai Maharaj made his way to Sarangpur for the full doll festival. At that time in Sarangpur, Yogi Ji Maharaj did the pujan of the marble Charnarvind of Bhagwan Swaminarayan, which is atop a, a mar- the marble shrine, the marble oto in the Rang Mandap. So many of us have probably seen that oto in in the Rang Mandap. So this is where Yogi Ji Maharaj did the pujan for this during the full doll utsav. And then eventually they carried on their travels. Let's move on to G28. From Sarangpur, Pramukh Sahib Maharaj went to Botad. Botad Ma, he was meeting there. He had a, he had a meeting with the local Hari Bhaktas over there. And while he was there, he inspected the construction of this, the new Hari Mandir that was about to be built over there and gave some feedback as well. Again, Nanu Mandir Hoi, Kemotu Mandir Hoi. Pramukh Sahib Maharaj's enthusiasm and zeal was always the same in every single project. From there, from Botad, Pramukh Sahib Maharaj then went to Gadda, where he joined Yogi Ji Maharaj and 15 other sadhus to go to Rajula. En route to Rajula, the driver had actually missed the road leading to the village on that day. It, it became very dark that night and they actually got lost. Eventually, they got to Rajula at 4 a.m. in the morning. <clears throat> you can imagine, after such a grueling, difficult uh, utsavs, and then you get tr- uh, stuck in the, um, in the night, you get lost and you have to get back at 4 a.m., could be very, very frustrating. But for Yogiji Maharaj and Pramukh Sai Maharaj, they were very, very calm. <laughs> Nevertheless, even though they got back at 4 a.m., the next morning they were ready for the Nagari Yatra and the Murti Pratishta. So there was a Murti Pratishta that was going to take place in Rajula. That's why they were there. But again, they were ready for the Nagari Yatra and the Murti Pratishta. Eventually, from Rajula, they all went to the house of the famous poet Dula Kag, who lived in the vig- uh, village of Majadar. Dula Kag was a Padma Shri award winning poet, and he was the one that wrote many bhajans that we can see a picture of Dula Kag. And he was the one that composed or that wrote many uh, bhajans that we know. Pagad Hua Dione Ragurai, a very famous bhajan. He was the one that wrote Deto Deto Ne Deto Jogiro. He wrote uh, Jogi Joya Joanu Kaina Rayure, Jogi Dane Joa Gayata Jonara Jadpana, Mune Walu Jogi Dataro Mukhadure. We can see that this Dula Kag was so influenced by Yogi Ji Maharaj. We will hear some prasangs in, in the future episodes. But he was the one that wrote all these bhajans. And he welcomed everybody at the house. He served everybody lunch. Eventually, then they made their way to Bhadra. The Santos, they made their way to Bhadra. Now, this Bhadra is not the same as Guna and Sami's uh, birthplace. It's a different Bhadra. It comes in the Mawa district. So, from there, they went to Mawa. Let's move on to G29. Now, in Mawa, there was a Haribak by the name of Popat Bhai Dani. And he had arranged lunch for all the Haribaktas and the Santos at his house. And Swami was busy. Pramukh Sai Maharaj again got involved in the seva. So he started serving uh, all the Hari Bhaktas who were waiting in the Pangat. But while Swami was doing that, there was a learned Brahmin who was an astrologer. And he was watching Pramukh Sai Maharaj bending over, serving all the Hari Bhaktas very affectionately and filling their plates. After a while, the Brahmin called Popat Bhai. And pointing to Swami Pramukh Sai Maharaj, he asked, he says, who is who is the one that is serving? Who is this son? Because he was, this was the first time he had actually seen Pramukh Sai Maharaj. And Popat Bhai then gave a reply and he explained that this is Pramukh Sai Maharaj. The Brahmin said that like Yogi Ji Maharaj, thousands of people will follow Pramukh Sai Maharaj. My knowledge of astrology is very limited. But on seeing the appearance of this sadhu and examining his characteristics, it appears to me that if we were ever to meet again in future due to God's grace, then I will remind you of this. But remember what I've said. So again, prophesizing about Pramukh Sai Maharaj, Popat Bhai was very stunned, but that prophecy was definitely something that we were all witness to in the years to come. Let's move on to G30. So from Bhadra, Pramukh Sai Maharaj and Yogi Ji Maharaj, they came to Mahua, and from Mahua, Mawa meaning Bhagaji Maharaj's Janmastan. There they went to do darshan of Bhagaji Maharaj's birthplace and they did darshan of the Samadhi place as well. And Yogi Bapa sprinkled the holy water from the river, Ma- river Malan on all the heads of all the Santos and the Hari Bhaktas over there. And while he sprinkled some water on Pramukh Sai Maharaj, he said a very nice thing. He said to Pramukh Sai, he was so happy and um, he made a very strong statement saying, Ke ape, he said, Yogi Bapa says this to Pramukh Sai Maharaj, Ape alaukik kaam satsang ma kare luche. Te fad rupe, apne bhagaji maharaj na sthane thi shub ashirvache. Yogi Bapa is blessing Pramukh Sai Maharaj. 
ते तम द्वारा स्वामी शास्त्री जी महाराज अलौकिक काम करशे ही सेइंग द थ्रू यू शास्त्री जी महाराज इज गोइंग टू डू सम ग्रेट वर्क्स तमो स्वामी शास्त्री जी महाराज नो स्वरूप छो व्हाट अ पावरफुल स्टेटमेंट योगी बापास गुरु वाज शास्त्री जी महाराज एंड योगी बापा वाज सो प्लीज्ड बाय प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज जी सेवा लुक एट द स्टेटमेंट ही सेस के तमो स्वामी शास्त्री जी तमो स्वामी शास्त्री जी महाराज नो स्वरूप छो ही सेइंग टू प्रमुख स्वामी महाराज दैट यू आर शास्त्री जी महाराज इज स्वरूप सो दिस वाज अ अनदर महिमा गान महिमा वाचक वर्ड्स दैट वी हर्ड फ्रॉम योगी जी महाराज eventually the group made their way to bhavnagar the maharaja of bhavnagar his highness maharaja krishna kumar sri ji had just passed away and so yogi ji maharaj and pramukh sai maharaj visited his palace to offer condolences uh, to the family and bless the princes at that time the maharaja had also met shastri ji maharaj so we know about his uh, connection with the mandir in garda as well so this was another uh, prasang that we hear about in this chapter let's move on to g31 Pramukh Sai Maharaj eventually made his way to the village of Nar. Nar is again in the Charotar region, and he did a paran over there. Now the paran was organized by CM Kaka. We all know CM Kaka, who was the one of the chairman, who was the ex-chairman of in London Mandir, and so they were very close friends. So he had insisted that Pramukh Sai Maharaj come to Nar, and so to fulfill his wish, Pramukh Sai Maharaj was there uh, delivering a paran or Hari Lila Kalpataru. From Nar, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then made his way to Bochasan for the celebrations of the Chaitri Punam, which was held on the 15th of April 1965. And once the festivities were over in Bochasan, Pramukh Sai Maharaj received the news that Mota Swami's health was deteriorating, and Mota Swami was in Atladra. So immediately, Pramukh Sai Maharaj changed all his plans and hurried to Atladra to make sure he could visit and meet Mota Swami. And while he was there, he got a report about Mota Swami's uh, ailing condition. again very typical of pramukh sai maharaj you know he could see the compassion the empathy the sympathy that he had for shastri ji maharaj's santos and all the hari bhaktos that when something like this was there he would drop everything and make sure that he would go there and comfort the santos or the hari bhaktos who were there as well let's move on to g32 now yogi ji maharaj had arranged vichran in the region of the sabarkantha and almost a group of 100 people including 25 sadhus and 35 yuvaks were to join this which and so you can imagine a huge delegation at that time we can see the pictures uh, of swami doing this uh, grueling vichran and pramukh sai maharaj was a part of this vichran as well important to know that yogi ji maharaj and pramukh sai maharaj both were traveling during this vichran the vichran took place in the month of april in the scorching sun now we know that temperatures in april would ray- go all the way from 35 to 45 degrees yet <coughs> pramukh sai maharaj and yogi ji maharaj did their vichran in the sabarkantha area during that time amongst the scorching sun and the dust winds during the 15 day vichran pramukh sai maharaj visited almost 33 villages at that time so again we can see the vichran just carries on and today we can see that the satsang in the sabarkantha region is all credit to the vichran done by our gurus yogi ji maharaj and pramukh sai me maharaj let's move on to g33 pramukh sai maharaj's vichran eventually took him to Gondal and on the 12th of May Swami was in Gondal and a shram yagna for the laying of the foundations of the construction of the gurukul uh in Gondal that's when they began so there was a shram yagna shram yagna meaning they were all involved in the seva at that time and to initiate the shram yagna yogi ji maharaj first ceremonially struck the land with a pickaxe and then pramukh sai maharaj followed accordingly and then the sadhus who were studying in mumbai they had also arrived for this occasion and so they all joined in the shram yagna for this gurukul in gondal pramukh sai maharaj carried on with his travels from there and eventually came to botad where yogi ji maharaj performed the pratishta of this new mandir pramukh sai maharaj had worked tirelessly for the construction of this mandir and so yogi ji maharaj had made sure that he kept pramukh sai maharaj very close to him even while performing the pratishta and the first aarti of the newly consecrated murtis from botad they went to sangavadar yogi ji maharaj and pramukh sai maharaj performed the ground breaking ceremony of a new yet a new mandir that was to be built, be built over there from there they traveled to ningara again they performed the ground breaking ceremony of yet another mandir we can see the number of projects that are unfolding during this vichran as well sometimes we wonder how and where they had the time to manage such operations again from there pramukh sai maharaj then traveled to keria roishada and valbipur eventually 
uh, reaching Chogad. Now in one day, in one day they did reach run through six villages, performing groundbreaking ceremonies of two mandirs and one pratishta we heard earlier. They finally reached their destination at around 11.30 p.m. That was the end of it. When they get to the destination, then they had to do katha and then dinner. So again, we can see Vichran at such a late age from Pramukh Sai Maharaj and Yogi Ji Maharaj. Let's move on to G34. Now, 1965, that year, Yogi Ji Maharaj's uh, 74th birth anniversary was going to be celebrated in Bochasan. So Pramukh Sai Maharaj was there well in advance to ensure, ensure that all the preparations and everything had been undertaken and was done uh, Accordingly, now during the celebration sabha, Mota Swami and Pramukh Sai Maharaj offered their respects by placing a garland on Yogi Ji Maharaj. Now, just as Yogi Ji Maharaj was about to place the same garland back on Pramukh Sai Maharaj, Pramukh Sai Maharaj just suggested to Yogi Bapa to garland the kothari of the mandir. Bhakti Valla Swami was the kothari of the mandir. Now, just imagine Yogi Bapa is trying to put the garland on Pramukh Sai Maharaj as a gesture of appreciation, but at the same time, Pramukh Sai Maharaj gestures to Yogi Ji Maharaj or points out to Yogi Bapa to garland the Kothari of the Mandir at that time. And again, very typical of Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Swami Ji made sure that he called Bhakti Vallabh Swami who was the Kothari and then got Yogi Bapa to garland him instead. You know, the words Vivek and respect come to mind when you hear such a prasang. Bhakti Vallabh Swami was the Kothari of Bochasan Mandir. The festival was taking place in Bochasan again. And so Pramukh Sai Maharaj wanted to make sure that even Bhakti Vallabh Swami was equally honored on such an occasion. And this was something very amazing about Pramukh Sai Maharaj. He never forgot the sacrifices that were made by others who were before him. Let's move on to G35. From Bochasan, Yogi Ji Maharaj and Pramukh Sai Maharaj eventually went to Nadiad, Medao, and eventually to Adas. Yogi Ji Maharaj performed the Pratishta of a new mandir that was built, new Hari Mandir that was built in uh, Adas at that time. They covered more villages in the Charota region and eventually moved to Betasi on the night of 11th of June. Swami had made a note in his diary of something that he liked about this particular village. And in his diary, it was interesting to see what Swami writes in his diary. Gam Trana Bhagamache. The village has been split into three different sections. Vanto, Tadpad, Ane Baraya. Baraya Vado. Trana Juda, all three are different. Panchayat Kua Pan Juda Pan Samp Saroche Padramani Thai Swami praised the unity of the village. You know, so this is something that we saw that Swami would love, even though there were three different sections of the way the village was managed, yet there was a lot of unity in this village. And Pramukh Sai Maharaj made a point in his uh, diary. So again, something very interesting to see. Sari Vastu Hoi Epans Pramukh Sai Maharaj Lakhi Nakta. Eventually, Pramukh Sai Maharaj traveled to Badalpur. Yogi Ji Maharaj performed another Murti Pratishta over here. And the village welcomed everybody and celebrated this occasion by preparing Churmana Ladu from two and a half thousand, again something that was noted as, as well, from two and a half thousand kilos of flour. And they fed almost 12 to 15 thousand people who attended the ceremony. From there, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then traveled to Anand. Yogi Ji Maharaj did pujan of the murtis of Hanumanji and Ganpati. And Pramukh Sai Maharaj had worked very hard in Makrana to arrange for these murtis to be prepared. And so Yogi Ji Maharaj again made sure that he kept Pramukh Sai Maharaj with him throughout the consecration and the, the vidhi and the rituals that took place at that time. Let's move on to G36. So on the 20th of June, 1965, Yogi Ji Maharaj and Pramukh Sai Maharaj, along with Mani Bhai Jiva Bhai, inaugurated the student hostel known as the Akshar Poshadam Chhatralai in Vidyanagar. We all know about the Chhatralai in Vidyanagar. This was the historic date, the 20th of June, 1965. Many professors, teachers, and socio-political leaders were also there, including the vice chancellor of the university and other dignitaries had all graced this occasion. This was a very historic occasion for BAPS. We all know because again, so many Yuvaks who passed through Vidyanagar Chhatralai made uh, have contributed as sevaks uh, as, uh, throughout the sansta. Not only that, they've also become sadhus. I may be correct in saying about almost 10% of the sadhus would probably come from BAPS Chhatralais. And this was again a momentous occasion for us in the history of BAPS. But while addressing the assembly on this occasion, Pramukh Sai Maharaj uh, spoke to the gathering and he said something very nice. He said, everything in life, simplicity, flexibility, seva, self-restraint, tolerance, fraternity, 
to empathize in the joy and sorrows of others can be witnessed in Yogi Ji Maharaj's life. So he spoke a lot about Yogi Bapa and made sure that, you know, that we all keep him as a medium and as a role model in our own lives. And Swami said that we will gain strength to practice accordingly and he will continue to inspire us in immensely. Swami Shri's, meaning Yogi Bapa's life, is a goal and a message in itself. All of you will stay in the Akshar Pushatam Chhatralay. All of you will understand that the eternal truth of Atma and Paramatma, Akshar Pushottam is prof- propounded by Shastriji Maharaj. All of you will make successful the efforts of these divine beings and will immortalize the name of the hostel. Your responsibilities as use are many. So these are some very, uh, very inspiring and very motivational words of wisdom that are shared by Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Your responsibilities as youths are many. Who would not wish to have a beautiful life? Who would not want to make their lives fulfilling? So, you all will adorn this student hostel by not shaming the Tilak Chanlo, but by living a moral life, by following the rules and regulations, and by maintaining unity and fraternity. And we can see those words resonating even today in the Chhatralai today. Pramukh Sahib Maharaj, from there, he carried on his vichran. Now we will move on to G37. From Vidyanagar, Pramukh Sai Maharaj then made his way to uh, deliver a parayan on the third chapter of Harilila Kalpataru. Now during their stay in Jamnagar, Yogi Ji Maharaj and Pramukh Sai Maharaj visited the bungalow of Maharaja Jam Saheb of Jamnagar. The Jam Saheb, Sri Digvijay Si Ratan Si Ji, he had spent up to an hour in the company of Yogi Ji Maharaj and Pramukh Sai Maharaj. And then from Jamnagar, Yogi Bapa and Pramukh Sai Maharaj, they went to Aliabada, the place where Sri Ji Maharaj and Gunan Sami had met for the first time. Again, a very historic place. And from here, eventually they made their way to Gondal. Let's move on to G38. Now, when Pramukh Sai Maharaj was in Gondal, he would normally... There was no separate room for him. He stayed along with the rest of the sadhus, nothing specific, nothing special. His potlu, which consisted of just clothes and his puja, again, was kept amongst, uh, in the common area. Now, one day on July 4th, 1965, God knows why, but a thief must have broken into the room. And he ran off with Pramukh Sai Maharaj's puja. Pramukh Sai Maharaj was deeply saddened by this because this puja was given to him by Shastri Ji Maharaj when he was initiated as a sadhu. And for the first time in 25 years, you know, something like this had happened because this was the murti that Pramukh Sai Maharaj had done seva of for the last 25 years. And now all of a sudden the puja would, was taken. They all looked around, but they couldn't find the puja. Eventually, Yogi Bapa then gave Pramukh Sai Maharaj a new puja that same night. Pramukh Sai Maharaj offered his uh, morning bhakti by doing the, by using the new puja. But still, the, his mind was constantly lost in the, the uh, thoughts of losing that puja because that keep, kept on lingering in his mind. Yogi Ji Maharaj caught on to this. And so, Yogi Bapa then gave Pramukh Sai Maharaj a murti of the Akshar Pushottam Maharaj from his own puja. And he gave that and a prasadinu a vastra, a holy cloth from his own puja to Pramukh Sai Maharaj. Luckily, Pramukh Sai Maharaj's original puja was found a few days later. And so... Some of the, although some of the murtis were still missing, but many of the murtis were still retrieved. Pramukh Sai Maharaj's return then took him to Bochasan to celebrate the Guru Punam Utsav. Although Pramukh Sai Maharaj was ably managing the arrangements for everyone, his main concern was about Yogi Bapa's health. Now, Yogi Bapa's health was not, uh, was keeping very poor during those days. And so his health was constantly being reviewed by different expert doctors, but there was no visible improvement. And eventually it was decided to take him to Mumbai. Uh, after talking to Yogi Bapa, eventually they decided to go to Mumbai. And a week after the festival was over in Bochasan, Pramukh Sai Maharaj, Yogi Ji Maharaj and about 25 other sadhus and devotees, they all left for Mumbai by train. We will uh, end today's session over here. Shri Swaminarayan Bhagwanani Jai.